I'm here on time. The parking was great. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles, so I'm always happy when I can park somewhere with no problem. Because I always, always see those signs, those stupid signs that they have put up. Like they had that sign that say no parking anytime. You ever seen that sign that says no parking anytime? Why don't you say no parking? Doesn't it seem like the sign got attitude? <laughs> or it's frustrated? Like it's saying no parking at any time. It's like, okay. <laughs> I understand. I like the signs that say no stopping anytime. Because it's like those signs are doing you a favor. Like it's saying no stopping. Like, thanks, sign. Like, anytime. <laughs> I got you. Why is wheelchair parking so close? I figure if you got wheels and you in a chair. <laughs> you should be coming from across the lot. <laughs> you got the best of, best of both worlds. My birthday's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up, yes. I don't like getting certain things for my birthday. I don't like when somebody gives me a gift card for my birthday. When somebody gives me a gift card for my birthday, I be want to say, hey, you know that store take cash too, right? <laughs> I'm not shopping online. <laughs> to me, getting a gift card is almost an insult. Like they trying to say I'm not responsible. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I would give the money but all you're going to do is spend it on alcohol and drugs. <laughs> and you need some clothes real bad. <laughs> so go on to Marshalls and get you some shirts. The worst is when you got money left on the gift card, but it's not enough to get anything of value. Like they be like, you got $2.28 left on this card. You be like, what can I get for $2.28 at the man's warehouse? Like, y'all got any gum back there? <laughs> any snacks? That's the always wonder why when I got to the front of the counter, like at the Best Buy, where all those snacks were so expensive. Like that had like, a 20 ounce bottle of Coke for $1.68 plus tax. Then I figured it out. I'll say, I, I said, okay, I understand. These are gift card prices. <laughs> My friend, he hates when I do that joke, because he said having a gift card is like having regular money. I said, well, try using a gift card on the first date. The girl would look at you crazy and be like, oh, wow. I didn't know your grandmother was paying for this. All right, guys. Um, see, a while back when I was in school, when I was in high school, I used to work at McDonald's. I worked there for two weeks, a long time ago. Yet still, to this day, my mom still thinks I have an inside track on when the McRib's coming back. <laughs> He's hit me up about this elusive sandwich. I have no idea when this thing is coming back, you know? She loves that thing. Nothing will make her happier than a McRib Christmas. She loves it. So I always a limited time with that thing. The McRib's a lot like a deadbeat dad. It comes around every once in a while to check in on you. Like, how you doing? You doing all right in school? You better keep them grades up, man. I'll be back in a year, maybe go see a movie or something. And your mom hates him, like, damn it, McRib. You're three months behind with the child support checks. You're dripping rib sauce all over my carpets. You cheap, boneless bastard. The real reason it's only ran for a limited time is because it tastes like doo-doo. It's the worst sandwich ever made. You can only keep it in your stomach for a limited time. I try to eat this stuff. I try to eat healthy. My girl, my girlfriend eats healthy. She's a big fan of that. She, uh, she actually woke up screaming this morning, having a nightmare or something. But uh, apparently I, I move my legs around a lot when I sleep, and it's been a while since I cut my toenails, so uh, I sliced up her ankles pretty bad. It was, it was, it was pretty rough. It wasn't that bad, I, mean, I think she overreacted. She's like, oh my God, your feet are like swords. I say, hey, take it easy. She's so abusive with her words. It wasn't that bad, I mean, she did need stitches, but it wasn't like a serious gash. I admit it's not my first time slicing up some girl's ankles in the sheets. 
not my first rodeo at all. But it was a test and she failed because she left me. She called me a gargoyle and broke up with me. She failed the toenail test. I keep always trying to change me. Talking about cut your nails. If she loved me, she would have wore combat boots to bed, you know? And just accepted me for who I am and my long ass toenails. Hey. hey! So I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. If you haven't been there, it's like the blackest place outside of Africa. <laughs> Unnecessarily black. Uh, but I do love being black, don't get me wrong. I like all the low expectations. So keep it coming, white people, keep it coming. <laughs> no, I, it made my life easy. All I gotta do is tell everybody I graduated from high school. <laughs> they be like, wow, good for you. I'm like, dang, that was easy. Shoot, let me keep on going then. I ain't got no baby daddies. <laughs> Remarkable. I'm like, and guess what? I can swim. <laughs> Love it. Love being out here. Uh, this year I turned 48 years old. Thank you. I love telling my white girlfriends because they give a sister love, you know? They embrace a sister. You know, they be like, oh my God, you are not 48. <gasps> What's your secret? I'm like, black. <laughs> it's finally paying off. <laughs> Took 50 years, but hey, I love it. They don't like you telling your age in the industry. When you're in the entertainment industry, one time I told my age on stage, I got off stage, this dude, Jack, he chased me down. He was like, Tracy, you know what? You real funny, but don't tell your age on stage. Stop telling your age. I was like, did I disturb a fantasy or something you had about me? You know what I'm saying? Don't let it be my age, that's real. Wait till I take off this hair. <laughs> I can disturb your fantasy. <laughs> Tracy, Treyonce. <laughs> I don't get it. God, I'm tired of people trying to tell me what to do. I'm like half of a hundred, you know? I can't do it no more. This dude, yo, this dude the other day, he, he tracked me down at the bus stop. He was like, I'm catching a bus. He gonna jump in my face like I'm wrong. You catching a bus? You need a ride? Take my number, call me, cause you are too beautiful to be catching a bus. I was like, fool, ain't nobody too beautiful to be catching no bus. Shoot, I wish I was too beautiful to pay my rent. Mm. You know, that's beautiful, you know what I mean? I got a dollar seventy-five. What the what kind of beauty you talking about? You know what I mean? Be bugging. Black guys don't like me wearing weaves. I just want to wear my weave in peace. You know, and they always coming up doing detective work, like that ain't your real hair. I know. I bought it. <laughs> I'm not delusional, you know what I mean? Nah, that ain't your, I know, I know. Like I'm trying to fool them or something, you know? Like I ain't trying to fool, I'd be trying to fool you if I had a penis, you know what I mean? Trying to fool you? I let them know right before they come, right even before they can come out their mouth, I be like, honey, it's a weave, this a weave, this a weave. <laughs> and you better be glad this a weave, honey. Because if this was my real hair, I wouldn't even talk to you. <laughs> Stupid, you know what I mean? For real. I can't take too much more, you know? I'm sober now, I'm 10 years sober from alcohol. Thank you. Thank y'all. And I've never been to AA. They want me to go to AA, but um, I don't know, because after my two DUIs, when I went to traffic court, the, the AA people I saw kind of freaked me out. You know, just the way they smoke a cigarette is freaky. You know what I mean? They be like. Uh, down to the butt. I'm like, maybe you should have a drink. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know? I don't know, I just can't see myself going to a meeting every day for the rest of my life saying, hey, my name is Tracy. 
I'm an alcoholic. I'm like, why should I call myself an alcoholic if I don't drink alcohol no more? I mean, you don't call yourself a millionaire if you ain't got no more money. That don't sit right. I didn't even know I was an alcoholic. I didn't know I had a problem, problem until I used to go over other people's houses and they used to have like wine collections. And I was like, how they collect it? You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep alcohol in my house and they decorate with it. <laughs> I'm glad I moved from Atlanta to LA because you know now I got a lot of white friends and I can tell I'm the only white friend, the only black friend of a lot of my white friends. I can tell by the way they ask me to go jogging, you know. Like I'm cool with the jogging, it's just to have, until I find out how many miles y'all like to jog. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be like, oh, just six or seven miles. I'm like, you got the wrong kind of black person. <laughs> That's Ethiopians. <laughs> Ethiopians. I mean, we run, but from something, you know what I mean? It's like, I can't, you know? So, I'm single because I like black guys. Yeah, basically. Because yeah. it's hard to find a black man that's single, straight, and out of jail, you know? Because I want a good black man like an Obama black man. Yeah, since I'm dreaming, you know? But I know that's rare, that's rare. That's like a white person with no suicidal thoughts. Just, <laughs> thank y'all, y'all been fun, it's my time. Like I say, I do stay in Los Angeles. I gotta find me a job, it's expensive out there. I've been knowing they got some weird jobs, they got some crazy jobs. Have y'all seen the people at the corner with these street signs? They let you know where to get your taxes done or where the Little Caesars is at? I seen this one guy, he had the sign. He was swinging it, twirling it, throwing it in the air, catching it. I was like, well, can you hold it still so I can read it? <laughs> I'm like, you got the simplest job. <laughs> and you can't even do that correct. I've been knowing people advertising all different type of ways. I've been seeing people advertising on a vehicle which I think is cool, but don't do it if you're driving a jacked up vehicle. <laughs> I seen this one guy, he had this busted 89 Honda Accord, and on the side of his vehicle, he had financial advisor. <laughs> I said, who's he giving advice to? MC Hammer? <laughs> oh, I can't touch that. I can't talk about nobody, I'm broke myself. Being broke got me doing broke things. Like, you know what got so bad? I was riding around the other day looking for a Payless outlet. I said, Payless doesn't have an outlet anywhere? I ain't gonna ever get any shoes. Finally got a date though, I did finally get a date. The girl, she knew I'd have had that much money. She said, we can go to the movies and we could just go Dutch. That means you pay your half and I pay my half. I said, better yet, let's go African-American and sneak me in through the back. <laughs> I got bill collectors calling me every day. I don't understand why do the same bill collector call more than once or twice? Like, you know, he call you 15, 20 times in a row, call you for months on end. I never understood that strategy. Have anybody ever paid off a bill because a bill collector kept calling? Like, if this dude called one more time, I'm gonna go ahead and pay him that $700 I owe him. She had, before she left, she said she was flabbergasted with my toenail. I, I only heard that word in movies. Some old British guy, oh my dear, I'm awfully flabbergasted. I had to look that word up. It means to be overcome with astonishment. It actually sounds like a compliment, don't it? Hey, girl, you look absolutely flabbergasting today. <laughs> Doesn't sound very flattering, though. It'd be more appropriate if you said, uh, hey, man, don't go in the restroom. Somebody didn't flabbergast it all over the floor. <laughs> I got a flabbergast residue on my boots. These are new frog skin boots. Expensive. 
eight dollars. <laughs> or be like, hey man, I was in the room when my wife gave birth. Her vagina was completely flabbergasted. <laughs> I never seen such flabbergastedization. Yes, that is a word. It almost sounds like a symptom. Do you feel flabbergasted at all? I do a little bit. Uh, who's that mean? It means we need to do more tests. But it doesn't look good for you. Doctors are kind of scary. I don't like going to the hospital. It's a little bit scary. Even though I love scary movies, big fan of horror films. I saw a good one a while back called Cabin in the Woods. Highly recommend it. Uh, great title for a horror movie, because personally, I think anything in the woods is terrifying. I don't care what it is. Pinkberry in the woods. I'm not going. I'm sure that yogurt comes with a side of murder, no doubt. Christmas morning in the woods. What'd you get for Christmas? I got a, a severed head in a box. I should have known better. It was in the woods this year. Scarlett Johansson in the woods. Okay, where exactly in the woods are we talking about? I might have to risk it. Do you have a precise coordinates? Do you have a satellite image? We lose in daylight, we should go. So I don't know if you guys know about this, but there is a survey out now where they found out that white people are more likely to believe that black people are magic. Really? Do you guys think we're magic? <laughs> if black people are magic, we've clearly been using it the wrong way. <laughs> Do you know how many more elections we would have won? Do you know how many bullets would be deflected? Do you know how many Oscar nominations would be fair? <laughs> If black people are magic, I mean, I feel like if there's anything that we've learned from the Harry Potter franchise, it's that white people are magic. You guys have that on lock, I'm just saying. I ride the train today, uh, and I ride it every day to work. If you've ever ridden the train, you know there are only two types of crazy people that ride the train. Uh, there are those that let you know they got a situation right away. <laughs> And then there are those that hide their light under a bushel for three stops. I know you know which one is better. Woman sat next to me on the train. First stop, cool. Second stop, fine. Third stop, she starts singing in my ear. I am beautiful and never sing away. Really? Lady, you couldn't have told me about that three stops ago. <laughs> now all the seats are gone and I'm stuck. Another time, this guy gets onto the train, looks me dead in the eye and calls me the N word. I know, so polite. Just saying, let me know up front. <laughs> I love rap music. Uh, but I grew up in the suburbs, and um, when you grow up in the suburbs, you have strange ideas about how the world actually works. So for the longest time, I thought that one day I could become Snoop Dogg's spell checker. <laughs> I thought it was a job. <laughs> you notice that fool was always singing in his songs. He's always spelling. Somebody had to figure out how many Z's were in a dime brizzle. I figured one day that somebody could be me. You guys know, because if you grew up in the suburbs, it's so tame, it's so vanilla, that you crave that danger of gangster rap, but with the safety of grammar and syntax. I uh, was socialized to be a rule abider. I follow the rules. But that does not mean that I don't have a rebellious side. Sometimes, when I'm in the doctor's office and I'm filling out the intake forms, I write in the for office use only section. I do. Just love notes, you know. 
Hey office, what up? <laughs> hey office, use it, don't abuse it. I like to think that uh, this section on forms was generated by somebody's massive meltdown. Like previously it was just white space and guys kept filling it up with drawings of boobies. And then one day some admin in the back just loses it. That's it, I've had it. From now on, for office use only. Pretty sure that's how it happened. Pretty sure. I don't know if you guys have tried this breakfast sandwich called the McGriddles. First of all, let's talk about the most ridiculous name for a breakfast sandwich. Uh, but there's a commercial, and the first time I watched it, it struck me as really racist. Um, it's a bus filled with a high school sports team. All female, all white, except for one. Coach gets onto the bus, it's coffee time. He gets to the first girl, hands her her coffee, one sugar, no cream. Next girl, one cream, no sugar. Gets to the black girl and hands her a coffee and a sausage egg McGriddles. <laughs> Cut to the white girl who's like, why does she get a sausage egg McGriddles? I'm sitting on my couch and I start talking to the TV. <laughs> Can a girl eat a sausage egg McGriddles in peace? You little white girls didn't want her on the team in the first place. She had to work a full year just to get there, had to work two jobs just to pay for the damned uniform. Yeah, I made the backstory up, so what? <laughs> it probably happened. <laughs> and I was angry because it struck me as really racist, but then I watched it again and I realized it's not racist, it's genius. Okay, because see, somehow McDonald's knows that even though I'm an adult now and I have all my new healthy ways, deep down inside, I am still just a chubby little black girl that loves McDonald's and hates racism. And they played on it. They just played on it. Because now it's not a breakfast sandwich, it's a justice issue. Okay, my people marched on Washington so that one day I too could eat a sausage egg McGriddles in peace, okay? Because the second time I saw the commercial, I didn't hear any of the dialogue. I just heard the theme song from Shaft. <laughs> it came in like, ba da 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 ba da 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 ba ba da 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 ba da 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 ba Here comes Isaac Hayes talking about, hey there, little black girl. You gonna let the white man steal your McGriddles too? <laughs> Hell nah. ba da ba 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 My name is Crystal, you guys have been fantastic. <laughs>
My name is Antoine Young. Y'all enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Some people think cats are scary. <laughs> I have a friend of mine definitely afraid of kittens and cats. I don't have much respect for cats. <laughs> I wanted a dog when I was a kid. I wanted to throw a frisbee to a dog and have the dog bring it back. The dog, my mom got me a cat instead. The cat was terrible at the frisbee game. Every time I thought he wouldn't catch it and bring it back, he would just attack my face. That was his main move. I think he hated frisbees. But yeah, I don't like cats because cats don't work, you know? Dogs work. They lead the blind, they find bombs, they work for the cops. Cop dog, they'd never be a cop cat. He'd be the worst cop on the force. Little cat box full of unsolved crimes. Angry police captain always looking for him. Where the hell's that cat we got doing police work around here for some reason? He's working the Griffith Park murders and I want results. He's always in a break room just staring out the window. <laughs> that cat's always on a stakeout. My grandmother had a cat though, a, cat, a mean cat named James. But I have a very unusual grandmother, you guys. She's a, she's a former bodybuilder. She used to lift weights professionally. 76 years old and rips. It is gross. I'm like, Grandma, you look more like one of the expendables. What are you trying to prove? <laughs> like, boy, my body's a temple. I take care of it. Like, a temple, it looks like a fortress <laughs> that no man can enter. I used to call it grand muscles as a kid. She hated that. <laughs> boy, don't call me grand muscles. I'll rip your damn arms off. She could do it too. She was very strong. <laughs> she couldn't cook very well. Everything she cooked tasted like muscles, which makes no sense. How's that, boy? It tastes like a bicep. I don't know what that means either. But she used to make these things called uh, muscle muffins with her own special concoction. Like, hey, eat these, boy. Make you go big and strong like your grandmother. Don't even sound right. <laughs> big and strong like my grandmother, no thanks. Sometimes she would pick me up from school. Literally come to school and pick me up like a bitch and carry me back home. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. She's, uh, she's getting up there in age, though, these days, guys. Her memory's not what it used to be. She got lost one night. Had to call me to come pick her up. She's like, come pick me up, baby. I don't know where I am. I said, Grand Muscles, where are you exactly? She's like, I don't know. Where I, I told you not to call me Grand Muscles, but uh, I don't know exactly where I am, but I think I'm somewhere in the woods. I said, click. <laughs> nice try, Woods. Not falling for the old grandmother in the woods trick. All right, guys, that's my time. My name's Devin Clark. Appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. You guys happy to be here? Yeah. I'm happy as all Kelly at a Hannah Montana concert, right? I'm happy I am. <laughs> With a weak bladder. You know what I'm talking about, son? <laughs> I'm getting older now, man. My body's going through some changes, man. Just turned 50 this year, getting older. And I remember when I was younger and I had to pee. I could run all day long outside, come home, have dinner, take a nap, then pee. <laughs> now when I think about peeing, I've already peed on myself. <laughs> and if I cough for hard, I'll shit on myself. That ever happened to you, sir? No? <clears throat> oh, there it is right there. There it is right there. I'm using my reading glass now to roll up my medical marijuana. This is crazy. I'm working on honesty as I get older. I'm trying to be honest. My honesty's gotten me some trouble lately. You know, I was on this airlines, and I can't mention the airlines, uh, Delta Airlines. <laughs> and there was a stewardess on the plane, and she was an elderly lady, and I don't have a problem with the elderly working. Work as long as you can. But she was old. And when she walked past me, I'm like, damn! They don't make them like they used to. And she turned around and looked at me and said, sir, is there a problem? I, I'm like, no, nah, I was just wondering how long you've been with the company. Yeah. She said, sir, this is my ID badge and my start time. And it was a picture of her with two dudes and a one propeller plane. It was the Wright brothers. <laughs> she was old. I got kids. I got nine kids, y'all. Yeah, I'm not even Mexican. I got nine kids. <laughs> And I'm honest with my kids. I raised them old-fashioned way. Like my mom raised me with honesty. My mom told me at a young age, she said, Skip, you're never too big. I can't bring you down to size. She said, don't let me take that refrigerator and knock you out with it. <laughs> so me being a smart kid at a young age, so mom, if that's the case, you might want to let me eat some of the groceries first. <laughs> Lighten up the load. 
I was knocked out for three days, y'all. I woke up with refrigerator on my forehead, <laughs> and I was a little chilly. I'm honest with my boys. My oldest boy plays basketball up at USC. Called me and said, hey, Dad, my girlfriend's pregnant. I'm like, okay, son, I can handle the pregnancy, son. How you doing in school, son? He said, Dad, I'm doing fine, and I'm staying focused. I said, son, focused? I said, you know your team mascot is the Trojan. <laughs> you ain't learning nothing in school, son. <laughs> My 15-year-old son came home with a math problem. He said, hey, Dad, I got this math problem. Can you help him? I'm like, sure, son. I can do a 10th grade math problem. What's the problem, son? He said, Dad, if I got five mice and four pounds of cheese, and they take half the cheese away, how much cheese each mouse need to eat to get an equal share? I looked him straight in his eyes and said, son, don't be asking me no shit like that. <laughs> you know I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> and I don't know trigonometry. <laughs> Ask your mama. One of my best friends came over to the house with his boys playing PlayStation with my boys. And he asked his son Tommy to take out the trash. And Tommy said, no, and kept on playing PlayStation. Now my boys jumped under the table. They thought some stuff was about to go down, you know what I mean? So the next day, I asked my son, I said, Enrico, take out the trash. He says, no. Kept on playing PlayStation. Now about 30 minutes later, his older brother came out of the room and said, hey, Dad, I have not seen my younger brother lately. I said, that's right, son. You are now one brother short. <laughs> I don't play that stuff, man. School system's all jacked up, isn't it? Teachers having sex with the kids nowadays. Where were these teachers when I was going to school? <laughs> Kids calling 911 and their parents, sir, can you imagine calling 911 on your mom? I grew up in a house with a rotary phone, y'all. Nine, did it, pa! <laughs> Never mind, click it, wrong number. I'm raising stepkids too, and everybody raising stepkids, stepkids are a hard job. Because as a step parent, you don't want to hear those words they say, right? You're not my dad, you can't tell me what to do, you're not my dad. Simple solution, step parents. Just put your arm around a little step kid. Just say, you're right, little step kid. <laughs> I'm not your dad. This house, not your house. That flat screen, that PlayStation, that food refrigerator ain't your shit. <laughs> then you walk up to the door and say, now get the hell out. I'm on the road a lot. I love traveling as a stand-up comic. I stay in some great hotels. Stay in some five-star hotels. You ever stay in that one-star hotel? You know the hotel where you can see your hand through the washcloth hotel? You know the hotel with a little bar soap and you wash your body and you lose the soap hotel? Then three days later, you're walking through Walmart and the soap just pops out of nowhere. You ever stay at that hotel? Fellas, relationships, ladies, relationships, you want to be the king of your castle, fellas? You got to treat your woman like a queen. Ain't that right, ladies? That's right. Ladies, you want to be the queen of your castle? You got to treat your man like a king. Ain't that right, fellas? Yeah. And it's real simple, fellas. Real simple. Women say they want the little things. Because women are like flowers. They need to be nurtured and treated right so they can stay moist. You follow me? <laughs> Like, do the little things for your ladies, fellas. Like, open up the car door for your lady. She loves you to do that kind of stuff. Stop jumping in the car, driving down the block, and realize she's not even in the car with you, man. <laughs> now you gotta come all the way back. Get in the car, you're going. <laughs> do something nice for your lady every now and then. Run a hot tub of water for your lady. Have some candles from the bedroom to the tub, some bubble bath, and, and sir, use real bubble bath, okay? <laughs> Don't use the joy in the kitchen. Cause then she'll wind up with a rash for three days she can't get rid of. And when you run in the water, make sure you know your ladies, fellas. When you run in that water, make sure you know your lady because if she's a Lane Bryant kind of girl, don't fill the tub all the way to the top. <laughs> Forget y'all, that's funny to me. I don't care about it. <laughs> Stay in love is what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Life is good for me right now. Getting older, like I said, you know. I, uh, I truly believe in uh, relationships and marriage and staying focused. Go to bed in the nude. Yeah. Go to bed in the nude, because you never know what you might bump into, right? Because you can't get mad with a titty in your mouth, sir, can you? No, you can't do that. I tried it one time, I was mad at my wife, I'm like, girl, every time, she was like, oh, 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 oh. 
This is what I was born to do, man. Stand-up comedy. I love doing stand-up. I've had some great jobs. I used to work for the Department of Corrections in New York City. Got fired, so I told my first joke. It was a knock-knock joke. It was an inmate man doing some hard time. He said, hey, Officer Clark, I heard you doing stand-up. Tell me a joke. I'm like, man, I only got one joke. He said, I don't care. I'm in here for life. Tell me a joke. I'm like, okay. Knock, knock. He said, who's there? I said, can't get out. He said, who? I said, you. You can't get out. That's my time. Skip clock, y'all. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's Team Sexy Dork. He had one job, you guys. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. I am. I try to be a real positive person. I try real hard. It doesn't always work. But, you know, I just think every day when I wake up, there are so many people who don't have the things that I have. You know what I mean? Like, there are people who wake up, uh, they don't have food on their table, you know? They don't have a roof over their head. They don't have a shower to pee in. You guys, like... <laughs> it's the little things. Do you guys remember being a little kid and having hope? <laughs> Just thinking that anything you could possibly dream of, conceive of, come true if you love. Just love anything in general, in particular. I remember when I was 16 years old, I made a pact with my best friend. We said, by the time we're 21, we're gonna be so famous. Uh, we're gonna be so famous that when we go to our high school reunion, we're gonna show up in a helicopter. We're gonna kick over the refreshments table for no reason. Then as we're leaving early, everyone's gonna run after us to say, we're sorry for all the emotional trauma we caused you and we forgot to get your autograph. Then you wake up, 10 years later, you're eating ice cream over your sink with your hands because all your plastic spoons are dirty. <laughs> but then you think, you know what? 16-year-old me, I'd still consider this winning. <laughs> are you serious? Ice cream for breakfast? <laughs> cookies for dinner every day. Not even cookies, I just crumble up graham crackers and chocolate bars in syrup. I call that milk. That's grown-up milk. It's just syrup. Milk's whatever you want it to be when you're an adult, right? Make my own decisions. I'm a strange person. I dream weird. I'm a lucid dreamer. Lucid dreams, if you don't know, are those dreams where you can tell that you're dreaming. In your dream, you're aware of the fact that you're dreaming, and you can participate in it. You can change things. Uh, I learned that lucid dreamers are 25% more intelligent than non-lucid dreamers. And someone told me that's because I don't read. <laughs> but I believe it, because I like to feel intelligent, yes. Lucid dreams are amazing when you're having a bad dream. You know, there's a guy chasing you with a chainsaw and you're like, hey Jason, first of all, uh, why are you wearing flip-flops? <laughs> Unpop that collar D-bag. <laughs> Stop it. Then you look at him, right? You say, hey, Jason, look at me. Now look back at your chainsaw. Look back at me. Look back at that chainsaw. It's now a kitten licking an ice cream cone. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? It's not going to be adorable in 15 minutes. You guys know why? Cats, lactose intolerant. <laughs> Lucid dreams are terrible when you're having a good dream, though, right? I had a dream the ATM machine wouldn't stop spitting out money. And I was just shoving cash everywhere I could, and I thought, if I just hold on tight enough, when I wake up, I will not live in a studio apartment with five people. <laughs> but then I realized, even if that comes true, right, I'm gonna have a completely different problem. I'm gonna have to explain to everyone at Bank of America where I got a shopping cart full of $75 bills. <laughs> That's a problem. I had a dream I was in a bar paying for drinks. Guys, I created this universe. There is a unicorn behind the bar in a mesh tank top. He's pouring nickel shots, but I have to pay full price. So I sabotage my own life and my dreams. It's terrible. <laughs> what happens? I walk out to my method of transportation, my transportation method of choice, which is my winged horse named Chauncey. He's a Pegasus. 
Why does Chauncey have a parking ticket, you guys? That sucks. I ride Chauncey back home to my mansion on a cloud. How come when we get there, I have six roommates still? What? <laughs> no pets allowed, right? That's what the lease said. In my dream, cloud house lease, no pets allowed. My cat that I have in real life isn't allowed in my lucid dreams. That's sad, you guys. <laughs> Living the dream in Hollywood, California. Weird thing about living in Hollywood is you start seeing your friends on TV. Right? See my friends in commercials all the time. What makes it really awkward is when I see those same friends out in real life and they don't have the $5 they owe me. <laughs> I had a friend who was in a McDonald's commercial. I want a McDonald's commercial so bad. I've been working out so hard. I want that McDonald's commercial body, you know? Like right now I have the McDonald's consumer body. but I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. He booked this commercial, three grand, three grand to take a bite out of a sandwich and spit it out, or in his case, not spit it out, because he's very poor. <laughs> three grand, it's a lot of money. He calls me up a few days after he got the booking and he says, you know what, I've been thinking long and hard, I'm gonna turn it down, I can't do it. What? He says, I went to Juilliard, okay? I'm a serious actor. I didn't go to Juilliard to sell out. I said, you also didn't go to Juilliard to live in your car in my driveway. <laughs> you eat Meg Egg McMuffins daily, okay? Stop being a McHypocrite. <laughs> Take that gig. It's terrible. <laughs> I don't think that real women necessarily have to have curves, you guys. I'm tired of hearing that. I am. Yeah, we gotta stop fat shaming people. We also have to stop thin shaming people, okay? Not okay to tell someone, hey, maybe you should get on a treadmill. But it's also not okay to say, hey, maybe you should eat a sandwich. <laughs> All right, have you seen those ads? This isn't real beauty, this is real beauty. All right, one is a thin girl and then the other is a not thin girl and the thin girl's got the circle with the line through it. This isn't a real woman. Pretty sure both of those are real women. Pretty sure both of those real women are, got real excited when they found out they booked a real modeling gig. <laughs> now one of those real women has to explain to her parents she's not a human being, you guys. <laughs> it sucks. I do think that real women should have eyebrows. <laughs> it's Hence, Hence Singleton, H-E-N-C-E. Good Lord. All my life, I've been getting this. Even at Starbucks? Hey, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Oh my God. Over there, they called me Hunts. <laughs> then it was Heinz. I said, that's ketchup. Like, Jesus Christ. Even when I was in Jamba Juice, only customer in there by myself, except for the employees. Going there, I said, I'd like to order a smoothie. He said, what do you want? I said, banana berry smoothie with extra protein. He said, you want whey or soy? I said, I'll take whey, because soy makes me fart. <laughs> so he said, what's your name? I said, hence, H-E-N-C-E. -E. So he writes it down, goes in the back, blends up my drink, comes back out, said, banana berry smoothie for Thomas? <laughs> Thomas? Hey, man, what's your name? I said, we just talked. How'd you get, what? He, I said, my name is Hence. He said, man, was your parents English majors? I'm like, no, because my name means therefore, henceforth. I said, no, my mother was a nurse and my dad was a drunk. But he didn't have to go to the meetings. And my mother told me, she said, anything you do, don't embarrass the family because you have a unique name. So I used to be a stripper. I thought it was the greatest job in the world until my mother found out. I get a phone call at 5.30 in the morning. Now in a black household, the phone doesn't ring that early in the morning unless somebody's dead. I'm telling you, I pick up the phone, I hear my mother in the background, she's like, boy! I'm like, yes. What are you doing on the front page of the newspaper? Naked. I'm like, huh? She said, yeah, the captions read, chocolate dreams, male exotic dancers, along with Hence Singleton, is suing Milwaukee Yellow Pages for discrimination. I'm like, Mom, that wasn't me. 
I said, Daddy's name is Hen Singleton too. I'm a junior. <laughs> I can imagine my dad at work that day because he called in, you know, the night before. His foreman, so, you called in yesterday, Hens, huh? Yeah. So, are you out moonlighting at your new job? What are you talking about? Doing a little shaky, shaky, shaky? You're a shake dancer now there, buddy? <laughs> he did not talk to me for months. <laughs> Another thing, I moved from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to West Oakland. And I thought West Oakland would be a nice place to live. No. Not even close. Because I ran out of gas. And if anybody ever ran out of gas, you know how lonely that feeling feels. But I ran out of gas, <laughs> but I ran out of gas in front of a bunch of homeless people on the hottest day of the year. And I'm pushing my car, and I see these guys, and I think, hey, they might like be, they might like be like the homeless people in Milwaukee and help out. No, not at all. But what they did do was follow me to the gas station and mock me while I pushed my car. Man, you know it's too hot to be pushing that car? You look like you could use some water. You're sweating a little bit. You know they sell it at the gas station. You look like you could use some help. But it ain't gonna be for me, though. I'm like, wow. And that ain't the worst thing that happened to me. This guy tried to sell me a shopping cart. Yeah, a shopping cart. Had Target on the side of it and everything. I'm like, dude, what am I gonna do with a shopping cart? He said, well, 20 years earlier, I thought the same thing. <laughs> now I'm a proud owner of a shopping cart. So I'm pushing a, an Asian lady's car down the road and a shopping cart. It's crazy. <laughs> and one thing that really upsets me about social media is selfies. Because I know a lot of you guys in here take selfies and I wanna educate you guys really quick because a selfie is self-explanatory. Self. When you add another person to your selfie, that's no longer a selfie. That's called a photo. Yes. And if you add three or more people to your selfie, that's called a group photo. 